there, it's Sandy Alnock with Bible Journaling Made Simple here on the YouTubes. And last week, I showed you the magic of the trick that I learned about using blending solutions, using that page as sort of a demonstration, but not really. I demonstrated on another page because I hadn't filmed that turtle. And I had a lot of people ask, can you please show us how to do the turtle? So I'm showing you how to do the turtle. And I'll tell you the story about that page in a few minutes while I do some other coloring. But what I am drawing is just a general turtle shape. I made the, the back of him a little bit heart-shaped. I found some pictures online and emphasized the heart-shapedness of the shell because I thought that was nicer. And then just add some legs in whatever configuration that you're trying to get the turtle to move in. They, they move their arms and legs in, when they're pushing and crawling through the sand in uneven ways. They don't just put them side by side, you know, make sure that there's either one of the arms or one of the legs that's stretching like I've drawn it here, because that's going to indicate that he's actually moving. And for me in the page that I was doing, the point is about moving. So you'll hear about that in a bit, but I've colored with some colored pencils outside of him so that I'm going to color him in later, but I wanted to do the background first because I'm going to use blending solution. And here I'm going to use the Gamsol, which was the thing that I talked about last week using Gamsol instead of baby oil, because I think in the past I tested only baby oil and baby oil leaves a stain on Bible paper or Bible like paper, like in this book. And I was shocked when I realized that I, I could use Gamsol in my Bible. Now I will put a caveat around this. There are people who left in the comments that baby oil is going to eat through your paper. I don't know that that's true. And I don't know that Bible journaling has been around long enough for anybody to have tested whether your pages are going to get eaten up by baby oil or not. I have been journaling since, oh gosh, 2014, I think. And I checked some of the pages where I used baby oil and the stains are still there and the pages are not eaten away at all. That's not a very long test. So if you're looking to save your Bible for generations, you may want to avoid using any kinds of solvents at all. I didn't want to use Gamsol in my Bible in the first place because it seemed like, okay, that's a chemical, probably shouldn't put it in there. Other people said, oh, it's perfectly safe and it's perfectly fine. I don't really know. If you're looking to keep your Bible for generations and pass it down to your kids, and for them to pass it down to their kids, then maybe you want to think about all your supplies. Make sure everything is high quality, artistic, and archival. I don't have children to pass my Bible on to. I don't know what's going to happen to my stuff when I'm gone, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about worshiping God in the moment. I am not doing this to create a legacy. And some people are, and that is fine. That is totally up to you and how you want to approach your Bible journaling. But I just want to put that caveat around it that there are people who have a very different opinion on this. So if you don't want to use blending solutions, then learn how to blend without it. I actually prefer colored pencil blended without it, which takes more time because you have to sit there and color in all those areas. You saw me do two layers of color here and do the Gamsol in between in order to get it to blend smoothly. If I were doing that with just the pencil, I would have been here for hours trying to fill all that area in. So using a blending solution just makes it faster. Depends on whether you're interested in fast or not. This is a page that I did that was completely done with no Gamsol whatsoever and hours and hours of blending. It took me about a week and a half to do. So I just want you to know that you can do it. You can do really beautiful work without blending solution. So back to the coloring of this. Now I am trying to get some waves going here in the sand itself. And I'm doing this with the cotton ball and the solution, trying to get them to be smooth. You can see I'm kind of building some waves. For the water portion, I'm going to use some powdered colored pencil. If you're trying to use blending solutions like Gamsol, then you might want to try this with it as well. This is a tea strainer and I'm just scraping the pencil against the tea strainer so it's leaving powder behind. 
And that's one way to apply the color to the page without getting all the lines from the pencil and then having to blend them. So you'll see the difference between the kind of effect that I can get using that versus the scribbling with the pencil. I thought I'd show you both of them here on this page so you can see what the two techniques are going to accomplish for you. So just adding some of the Gamsol and it immediately intensifies it and sticks it to the page. If you get some of that powder in an area that you don't want it in, you just blow it off and it'll just disappear from the page. And the, the smooshing of the cotton ball is going to be the thing that gets it to stick. So I'm trying to keep it really loose. I wanted it to feel like water in motion. And this technique worked really well for that to give me that, you know, lots of light areas, not trying to fill it in completely, etc. And the back side of it, again, this is what I discovered in last week's video that Gamsol does disappear from the opposite side of the page. When you do this with baby oil, which is what I used to use in my Bible, if I was going to use any blending solution at all, this would all have been a big greasy stain. And that is unfortunate. But I also showed you in that video how you can make a background over top of it that kind of hides the fact that it was a giant greasy mess. And uh, yeah, so there's that. Now for the turtle, I'm using purples and blues underneath for the, the main colors. And the reason is because I found this picture online when I was looking for a turtle shape to use. And when I took it into Photoshop and I lightened it so I could, it was kind of a black looking turtle, just a black shape. And when I lightened it a lot, I could see all the details of each one of the areas of the shell on the back and everything. But I saw an undertone of purples on the shell and more of a blue kind of undertone on the arms and the legs. And I decided to use that for my color scheme. Now you can make a rainbow turtle, you can make whatever kind of turtle you want for whatever you're doing in your Bible. I'm going to layer a couple colors over this to try to add some depth to it. And I'm going to use some blending solution as well, some of the Gamsol. I'm using a blending stump, which is basically a tightly wound piece of paper. And the container that I use that I've talked about before for my Gamsol, I use with cotton balls in it because that allows me to control how much liquid gets onto whatever I'm applying the Gamsol with. Because otherwise you'd be dipping into pure liquid and it would be hard to just get a tiny bit, but you could get a tiny bit by just barely tapping on that cotton ball to squeeze out just a little bit of liquid. The shell you could make with whatever kind of configurations you want for each of the plates. You can look up online to try to find something that works or you can make up your own. I tried to focus on keeping smaller shapes for each one of those plates around the outside edge and then a row of bigger ones and then really big ones in the center, keeping them kind of heart shaped in general adding a little bit of darker color to it to try to get a little bit of dimension added to it. Because for me, contrast is really what speaks to making something look realistic and I wanted him to look real. So I added a kind of dark purplish color to the shell and I'll add a little bit of dark blue or a dark blue green kind of color for the arms and the legs to try to do that. And then I'll add some black on top of that to make it really realistic. In the one in my Bible journaling page, I added a whole lot of black and I used a lot of the blender in order to get the color to look like in that photograph what I found. Now, the reason I was looking for the photograph, I'll talk a little bit about why I did that page in the first place, is that I saw a video on Instagram on the Reels tab of this little turtle who was walking toward the ocean and he was working really hard. He was just moving his little arms and his little legs and the ocean kept kind of coming up and washing him back and then he'd struggle and he'd move his little arms and legs. And I just thought that is so me that I am, I am working my way toward God every day and I fail and I get slid back and then I work my way toward God again and I rededicate myself and I just push and that is just my life sometimes. It feels like I'm swimming upstream. And and I put for the words on that page, make way. Because I feel like sometimes I see all those obstacles as waves coming at me. And they're just 
they're just swiping at me and I can see them coming. I know they're coming. God didn't promise me that this is going to be easy. And I, I know it's heading my way. And I just keep saying, get out of my way, get out of my way. I'm, I'm going through no matter what. You can push me back a few inches, but I'm going to take two big steps right after that. So that was my heart behind doing that page. All of my pages in, in general are ones that I'm speaking to God. He's speaking to me. I'm reading the scriptures and seeing what is being said to me about that scripture. I'm not trying to say, I want to draw a turtle in my Bible today. I'm seeking what image is going to best communicate what I'm reading in scripture. And in this particular case, that turtle just speaks to where I feel like I'm at right now, <laughs> just fighting against the onslaught of the waves. And it was perfect for that. So next up, I'm going to add some of that water and I'm going to do it by finger painting. So I didn't have very hard edges on that water that I had created. So I wanted to add a little bit of sharp, sort of foamy feel to it. So I'm just using regular old acrylic paint. Any kind of acrylic paint you've got is fine. And applying it with my finger in a broken fashion. Not any single line that's going to dominate the whole thing, but a whole bunch of broken areas. If you press really lightly with your finger, you'll get this really broken, rough kind of edge to it, which is perfect for this. And remember that waves are not going to be straight. You're not going to have a single straight edge or a series of three lines in a row or anything like that. You're going to have all different kinds of swirls of water, especially as it comes lapping up on the shore because you have waves that are crashing in from two slightly different directions. They're not always coming straight from the sea itself. They kind of curve around. So there's going to be places where they crisscross too. So watch this little, little X I even make in one area, but be careful that it doesn't become too prominent because then it can look weird. But it's just one of those things that you can look at pictures online and see what does it look like when waves crash on the shore and look for a picture of what those formations can look like. I also wanted to have a little bit of the water out here where the turtle is because this turtle is making it. He might be hitting some of the foam that keeps coming his way, but he's, he's making it through there. So I wanted to have some of that water out there as well in the sand because when the waves come onto the shore, there's a portion where you see only sand through it and there's a portion where you see water through it. And so he's kind of making his way through that transition. So having a little bit of it out here, trying to make it meet up with the edge of the turtle so it looks like he's going right through one of those waves. And this is, of course, an additional step you don't have to do on yours. If you're satisfied with how your water came out, then by all means, you could leave it that way. So I do have some more plans for fixing this water in just a minute, but for the time being, I wanted to also go in with a pencil and add some more shadows underneath of the turtle itself. Just, just darken those areas to make sure he looks like he's sitting on top of the sand because I don't want him to look like he's flying or anything. I want him to look like he's definitely sitting out there. You could put all kinds of texture out there in the sand by doing little dots. Uh, make sure you do that nice and unevenly. Don't worry about trying to do every single spot because just a few indications are enough to make you realize it's sand. If you haven't realized it already, it kind of looks pretty obvious to me too. So next I'm going to take a baby wipe and wipe off some of this, the white that's on the beach part. Because if I do it with the beach part, I'm going to get a lighter white. Uh, this is not completely dry yet so that I can lift some of that color and then I end up getting a softer edge to it. So if you end up with hard edges, you can always wipe off some of that paint. I do hope that this week's video makes up for last week, not showing you the turtle. I didn't realize how disappointed people would be because I didn't think anybody else would need to make a turtle in their Bible, but you can see how dark this turtle came out versus the other one. So more black makes them feel more realistic but it's up to you what kind of turtle you would want on your page. So that's about it for me this week. I will see you again next week with another video. Mother's Day is coming, so maybe there'll be a Mother's Day theme. We shall see. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.